um, we have an excellent group tonight, and I knew it was going to be good. I just knew it was going to be huge, and it is. So I was asking for standing room only, and that's what we have, standing room only. So we are ready to go. And now I would like to present to you Jerry Fredrickson. Jerry is going to introduce our first floor guest. Jerry? Uh, thank you. Uh, our first speaker is going to be Jennifer Epps, attorney and executive director of Wisconsin Jobs Town. Oh, Jennifer? All right. Um, the question that I'm speaking on today is question number three on your ballot. It's going to be should the state of Wisconsin increase the minimum wage to 10 10 an hour? Uh, I think a lot has been made about minimum wage in the last couple of weeks, and a lot of folks probably have heard a lot about it, especially after the last debate. I'm gonna do my best to inform folks about the history of the state's minimum wage law, which actually dates back uh, significantly further than the federal minimum wage law that most people are aware of. So the first thing folks should know is, what is the state minimum wage? Seven twenty-five. All right, this is a very educated group. There we go. Um, so the state's minimum wage is seven twenty-five. So that's what we're talking about when we talk about minimum wage. Um, let me just back up for a quick second. Uh, I have the honor of being the director of a group called Wisconsin Jobs Now, and we're an organization that goes across the state, going door to door and workplace to workplace to try to empower people to take collective action that benefits their lives whatever their individual issues in their neighborhoods and communities are. One of the things that we've been able to do and we've had the privilege of participating in over the last year and a half is organizing fast food, retail, home care, and other underpaid workers to fight for a living wage. And so many of you may have seen uh, back in September, uh, fast food workers here in Milwaukee uh, and across the state going out on strike. That is one of the uh, things that our group does, is help people find their collective voice and stand up for themselves. Um, my, my background really is all about the state of Wisconsin. I'm a fourth generation Wisconsinite. My father's mother uh, was born in the South as a sharecropper. She was picking cotton at the age of four. Uh, she my mother's family is somewhat similar. My grandparents uh, immigrated from Germany on my mother's side, and they, my grandfather, Grandpa George, came from a small German Catholic family of 13. Oh. <laughs> Although you Germans kind of get that right, German Catholic 13 kids. Um, they were raised in a farming community outside of, of Madison, and they learned and instilled in, in my mother and in, in my aunts and uncles the value of hard work and the idea that all labor has dignity. So that was kind of how my brother and I were raised, really believing that your job and your responsibility to uphold at your end of the bargain to earn your piece of the American dream was to go out there, was to work hard, was to contribute to society, was to do the work that you were called to do. And that's the frame that I really think about when I think about Wisconsin's, actually it's called a living wage law, but it's also our minimum wage law. So the living wage law in Wisconsin was actually passed over 100 years ago. Um, in 1913. And the law is very clear. The law says that all workers in Wisconsin must be paid a living wage by their employer. And it defines a living wage for us, so we don't actually have to get into the politics of what is a living wage, because it actually defines it for us. And the, the law itself defines a living wage as a wage necessary to live in reasonable comfort and decency, to take care of one's moral and physical well-being. That's actually in the law. Right? It's not my opinion. Um, and so the question before us is, does $7.25 equal a living wage as dictated by Wisconsin law? Is it enough for workers to live in reasonable comfort and dignity, or in decency? Now, we have two candidates, obviously, running for office. And one of the main questions that they were asked in their last debate, or in their first debate, I guess you would say, um, is, does 725 equal living wage? Can a family survive on $7.25? And uh, candidate Burke, Mary Burke's answer was no. 
but there's not a single family in the state of Wisconsin that can survive on that level. Governor Walker's answer was a little harder to ascertain, so we're lucky enough that there were a lot of follow-up questions, and I can tell you what he said. But he said a couple of things. First and foremost, he said that he wants to create jobs at two and three times the minimum wage, which I think is great. We all want that. We all want to return to a time when Wisconsin had a vast number of family supporting jobs. I would say that the factories that many of us think to and we sort of idolize as that's what a good family supporting job looks like, uh, most of those folks are not coming back, right? Outsourcing has taken away a lot of those opportunities from our community. The other thing about those jobs is that they didn't always used to be good jobs. We have a whole history, particularly in the city of Milwaukee, of people standing up and fighting collectively, joining and building unions in order to turn dangerous, low-paying, exploitative factory work into good family-supporting careers. And so when I say about fast food workers going out on strike, they're taking up that mantra to say the jobs that are here, they want to turn the jobs that are here into good family-supporting jobs. I think the basic question for us is, how do we reward work? Work that needs doing. Who are minimum wage workers? So here are the facts. The average minimum wage worker is over 30 years old. More than 80% of minimum wage workers are 20 years old or older. Right. Many of those folks are trying to support families. Um, like a worker I know named Roxanne Trick, who yesterday was in Madison to talk about uh, raising the minimum wage. Roxanne is a personal care worker or a home health care worker. She works her butt off. She works seven days a week. She takes care of some of the most vulnerable people in our community. And yet she only makes $8.50 an hour. And she doesn't get guaranteed full-time work. Now we need home health care workers. They're incredibly important. And yet they are some of the lowest paid workers in the entire country, even as they have one of the fastest growing jobs and careers. So the question is, what do home health care workers need? Should a home health care worker in this state have a right to expect that if they're going to take care of the health care of somebody else, that when they get sick, they also can go to the doctor? That when they need health care, they also have access to it? Is that something that, as a community, we expect? Other facts about minimum wage workers. More than a quarter of Wisconsin's workers are stuck in poverty wage jobs. Poverty wage jobs essentially are jobs that even after you, you know, bump them up to full time, even after you account for all other factors, they're jobs that keep people below the federal poverty line. So as a state, how do we move forward if a quarter of our workforce are trapped in poverty wage jobs? That's the question we have to answer, ask ourselves when we talk about raising the minimum wage to 10 times. Other questions that we have about raising the minimum wage. Um, you know, a big question about raising the minimum wage is how does it impact businesses? How does it impact the folks who are trying to create jobs and expand and grow their businesses? One of the things that shocked me when I started looking into this is that the vast majority of minimum wage workers work for multinational corporations. They work for Walmart, they work for McDonald's, they work for Target, uh, they work for all of these large corporations. These are billion dollar companies. And we're not just talking about their net worth, we're talking about their actual profits, right? Billions of dollars in profits. And yet their workers, more than half of their workers, rely on public assistance to survive. That was another thing Governor Walker said. He said that actually we do pay a living wage because a lot of the people who are paid minimum wage are on public assistance. So therefore, it's a living wage. You know, I fundamentally believe that we have to encourage people to work. We have to encourage people to get out there and work hard. And the idea that somebody gets up every day and goes to work and is forced to survive on public assistance seems so far against the values that we all hold as, as Wisconsinites and possibly against our living wage law. Um, let's see, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, 
A group of 100 workers coming from all four corners of the state filed a complaint against the state's living wage law saying that they are not able to survive on the money that they're making uh, from their jobs. And Governor Walker's administration denied their complaints without taking their testimony, without holding a hearing, and said that there's no reasonable cause to believe that the wages paid to workers in the state are not a living wage. That's a direct quote from the governor's release, so it's not my opinion, it's a fact. So the question then is, if, if that's true, does, you know, can a family survive on $7.25? Is that possible in Wisconsin? Uh, the last thing I'll just say in terms of the positions of the candidates, Mary Burke, uh, running for, uh, on the Democratic side, has said that she will raise the state's minimum wage to $10.10 per hour. Governor Walker said that he will not, and yesterday actually said during his Journal Sentinel, Sentinel editorial board meeting that he, while he won't repeal the state's minimum wage, he doesn't think it serves a purpose. So I guess the question that all of you should be asking yourselves um, as you go and you make your decision about this ballot is what kind of state we want to build? What should every worker in this state be able to expect when they get up every day and they contribute to our state's economy? 70% of our country's economy is consumer driven. It means it's driven by people's purchasing power. Is $7.25 enough for people to actually purchase their basic needs to keep our economy growing and to keep it going forward? Can they afford a market rate apartment? The fact is, is that there is not a single place in this country where a minimum wage worker making the federal minimum wage or the Wisconsin minimum wage, because they're the same, $7.25, there's not a single place in the country where a minimum wage worker can afford a market rate apartment. But what we're trying to do is get people above the level where they actually have to be, where they qualify for public assistance. I think that is a place to meet in the middle. Now, the exciting thing is, is that many business owners agree, including the owner of Culver's Restaurant, who on his own last year decided to raise the wages of his employees to $10.10, ahead of the trend, after it had been discussed in Congress. We have another, a, a number of other business owners in the state who have taken that same responsibility upon themselves. I think that there are a lot of hardworking people who are trying to figure out how do we build an economy that works for everybody. And while we can differ on the method of how we do it, I think what we don't differ on is we want to make sure that people have an incentive to get up every day and go to work. We want to make sure that the people who are helping to keep our state strong, the folks who are serving thousands of people food every single day, the janitors who are cleaning offices and schools and other buildings. The security guards who are protecting folks at the mental health complex. The airport workers who make sure that we travel safely and now are going to be asked to screen for Ebola. The home health care workers who are taking care of the most vulnerable people in our community. How do we make sure that their hard work is valued in our state? And that's the real question. Now you know, as you said, you know where I stand. You know that I think we should be raising wages much higher than 10 cents. So 10 cents is kind of a compromise for me. I wish I could go to the ballot and maybe cross it off and write something else in. But that's not the question on the ballot. And that's not the question that most folks are discussing. Right? The question is, how do we do better for working people? And would raising the state's minimum wage do better for the working people of this state? Okay, thank you.